Good afternoon, everybody, and a very warm welcome to members, colleagues, uh, members of the public and press as well to the first of our two overview and scrutiny board meetings this afternoon on Monday the 13th of January. The first, uh, we are here at HMS Phoebe in the Town Hall in Bournemouth at 4 o'clock. We'll be having a second meeting um, at 6 o'clock. The first of the two meetings is focusing really on the scrutiny of budget items and savings identified to date. Um, so I will pass over to um, Democratic Services for Housekeeping. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Please note that this overview and scrutiny board meeting is being audio recorded by the Council for the purposes of publishing on the Council's website in due course. Please could I remind councillors and officers to use their microphones when speaking. This meeting may also be audio recorded and or filmed for live or subsequent broadcast by members of the public. Please note that this meeting room is fitted with an induction loop for the benefit of hearing aid users. Hearing aids should be switched to the T setting. There are no scheduled fire alarm tests. If the alarm does go off, please leave the building by way of the nearest available signed fire exit route. Finally, please could mobile phones be turned off or switched to a silent setting for the duration of the meeting. The first item on the agenda um, is apologies, and we've received apologies from councillors Iyengar, Miles and Rigby. Um, for the substitute members we've received notification of from the appropriate group leaders or their nominated, re nominated representatives are Councillor Lisa Northover for Councillor Rigby and Councillor Mike White for Councillor Iyengar. Third item is declarations of interest. Do any members have any disclosable pecuniary interests or any registrable local interests in any items on this agenda? No. Uh, the fourth item is public speaking. Um, a late public question was received from uh, Mr John Sprackling, uh, which has been accepted by the Chairman's discretion. Uh, this question is in relation to um, a particular issue on the um, budget information, and it's proposed that the question be put during consideration of that item. Is that agreed? Are we agreed? Yes. Board? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, Mr Sprackling? Uh, be, be sure to holler at the right point, so I'll catch one. Thank you. And we haven't received any uh, public statements or petitions for this meeting, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. In which case, we will move straight to item five, which is the budget scrutiny. Um, by way of a bit of background, at the last overview and scrutiny board meeting on the 18th of December, we took uh, some budget scrutiny, particularly around the areas of adults and children's directorates. They are the areas that have the most savings identified for the forthcoming budget for the year 2020-21. Um, we had some broad information around those areas, but the board did feel that because we were told through the papers that a number of savings throughout all of the directorates had already been identified, it was appropriate to look at those pre-identified savings in more detail, predominantly around um, looking at uh, risk and, and what those budget savings actually are. Um, so we did take to Cabinet a request for that information. We eventually got that um, through uh, Cabinet, agreed that recommendation, and we have the report that we are considering in front of us. So uh, with the Board's approval, we'll, we'll jump straight in. I was intending to take the individual areas as they appear chronologically in the report that's in front of us. I have had a request to um, move a few items around for um, colleagues that have to escape elsewhere, but we will start with, as on the paper, the resources uh, directorate and what I'll ask is for each of the cabinet members if they want to introduce uh, the savings in front of us any pertinent items that they wish to draw forward and then I'll open it to the board for questions so Councillor Brown thank you very much oh apologies and the chief executive did want to make a statement up front thank, thank you Chairman Joe just to clarify one issue really um, so you have uh, the, 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 uh, the savings in front of you there are some savings where we're identifying staff reductions where we have not yet commenced consultation with those teams and therefore we, we won't be able to give details of those because it wouldn't be fair to because we haven't even started the negotiations or, or consultation yet. So I just wanted to make that clear in case you felt the members were being particularly defensive when we get to a subject and they say, well, we can't tell you anything about that. Uh, it will be primarily because we haven't yet started those consultations with the team and it would be unfair to start a consultation process through a public overview and scrutiny committee. Thank you very much, Chief Executive. So with board members, 
bear that in mind. Specific, specific detailed information about staff will not be forthcoming. Uh, it doesn't, of course, stop us in looking at the, the, the broader areas, um, particularly when savings have been identified. So I'll pass over to Councillor Brown and Bowl. means use the opportunity to talk about the, uh, how the budget process is going in general. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I was just going to come here just as a, a brief introduction to the whole thing before we move on to um, each individual sort of portfolio holder to talk around their area. Um, as you know, we're here in December and we went through the full medium-term financial plan report and, as I know, overdue scrutiny highlighted particular sort of, um, not concerns, but wanting sort of further details on the um, assumed savings. Um, particularly assumed savings for 2021. Um, so yeah, this is just a, an update report to provide that detail along with some risk analysis as well on those savings inefficiencies that have been identified to date. Um, I just wanted to highlight if, if members are looking at the December report and then looking at this report and trying to reconcile numbers between those, those reports, that this is as well as providing further detail on what was presented in December and some risk analysis, it's also an update of numbers. So the numbers have moved a bit if you compare, um, compare for each of the um, directorates. So, for example, adult social care, the savings have increased by around a million pounds. Um, children's services has gone down. That's partly due to the... Not that there aren't savings there, but they've reclassified some of those, so they may appear elsewhere in the medium-term financial plan. They may be identified as changes in government funding as opposed to an actual saving or efficiency. So they've, they've sort of been challenged around what all the different lines within it, and so some of the um, figures identified have been reclassified within the medium-term financial plan. But other than that, regeneration economy, environment and community, and corporate services have all shown an increase in the assumed savings since the report came through in December. So overall, I think in the December report, it was a total of £7.4 million in assumed savings. Um, that's now gone up to £8.25 million um, in this report. Um, just in terms of the risk rating, members would have seen that there's a red, amber, green rating, um, to to, which is detailed at the end of the report. And there's also a blue rating as well um, to show what's really been... What's, what's already been, been um, delivered. And there's a white rating as well for a couple of the um, savings for the following financial year where work to deliver that saving is yet to start. So um, that's the, um, the sort of risk, the risk rating that's been added into this. I think, as the Chief Executive said, on some of these savings, we need to be sensitive to sort of consultation requirements. Um, but I would just like to say my thanks really to the finance team who have pulled these numbers together and risk rated them over the Christmas New Year period. It was quite a short time scale to actually get, get things together. So um, hopefully this aren't, these numbers will answer quite a lot of the questions for Overview Scrutiny Board. But other than that, I think the questions will be mainly for each of the portfolio holders. But. Thank you very much, Councillor Brown. Um, wh while you're here, if any board members do have any particular questions around um, for Councillor Brown um, on the items either in here or the budget in general, um, Councillor Haynes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I thank Councillor Brown for uh, his presentation there, and he has actually answered one of the questions I had, which was the numbers don't actually tally uh, with the previous MTFP report that we received in December. Um, Whilst I welcome the schedule that we have in front of us, some of the details are still a little bit scant, like, for example, um, line 4, line 30, and the list goes on to say it doesn't really tell us very much more. Um, so one question is, I'm not sure that given some of the information that we have here, or lack of, whether it is still possible to be assured that these savings are actually deliverable. And along similar lines with the RAG rating, again, I welcome that, uh, particularly if you go to the section for regeneration, you have quite a number of ambers there. Um, there's amber, and then on the legend it says actions to deliver required savings have actively started but not been concluded. So you've got a 
with amber, there's always ranges as to whether or oh, it's deliverable. And actually, we're not sure whether we can deliver it, but we will keep working on it. So just wonder whether portfolio holder can kind of comment, particularly on the amber rating, whether he's confident that all the ones that are rated amber here, in his opinion, will actually be uh, a deliverable. And also, just a note to say that, you know, we would have preferred to have a lot more detail um, than what's in front of here. And then I'll ask one last question, which is um, the fact that the savings, as shown on this schedule here, doesn't tie back to what was in the December MTFP report. So portfolio holder Councillor Brown had actually said that the remainder of the probably one million has actually now been reclassified. So whether he can confirm or whether you need the portfolio holder for children's services to confirm that that one million pounds is still actually contained within the schedule, but just in a different part and where is it contained in there? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Right. <laughs> I'll try and um, cover those a few questions there. Um, in terms of the level of detail presented in the report here, I mean, this is the sort of established traditional sort of level of detail that, we, that is presented uh, historically. So, uh, you know, we can't do a, write a page. Well, we probably could write a page on, the, on each one. Um, but I don't think members would sort of read it all. And I think that's a lot of the purpose of today's scrutiny is to... Um, actually ask the portfolio holders if you know if, uh, questions around that if there's sort of further detail or further explanation that they can provide on the different lines um, but yeah the, in terms of the presentation and the information the level of information that's provided that's the, it's the our established sort of traditional level of information that's always been provided um, so and I think the further if there's further questions and further detail needed that's the purpose of today's scrutiny to sort of ask the relevant portfolio holder um, in terms of the amber um, items and yet yeah, there are quite a number where um, action is ongoing um, but has not yet been concluded um, and I think the question was am I confident that all of those will be delivered I suppose what I would say is I'm confident that the figures within this budget are the best figures that we can produce at the, this moment in time um, some of those areas I, sus I think will be savings are forecast in a range um, and we're being prudent about what's going into here, but as we work it through, we'll get more accurate figures about exactly what the saving that, that will, will turn out will be. So I think these are prudent. I, I can't say every single one will be delivered to exactly that level, but with the information we have at the moment, then I'm confident that this is accurate and prudent and is, is um, sufficient to go into a balanced budget that we will be presenting in February. Um, Hopefully that answers most of the points, but I think some of the detailed points will be for the relevant portfolio holders to expand on. Councillor Hayne, do you wish to come back? Thank you, Chair. Um, it's just one little bit of clarification on the AMBER rating and whether the savings in the portfolio holders' opinion is um, deliverable. Just wanted to clarify, Councillor Brown, you said that they are, on the one hand, you said they are prudent estimates or given the information you have that's what you think is realistic but then again you also said that um, we might not be able to n hit the target so it's like w which is it you know it, it, is 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 it all on the prudent scale or is it we think this is what we can do but actually we're hoping for the best I think the answer for the, to that will probably depend on the, exactly the, 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 the line that you're, that you're addressing, that you're looking at, because they all have different characteristics. And at the end of the day, setting a future budget um, and forecasting you know, the savings that we can drive out is looking into the future. Um, so we can produce the best figures we can produce, um, but then things may change as we, as we work through the year. Um, so... Yes, I'm confident with the numbers that are presented there. I'm confident that they're sufficient and they're prudent to go into a balanced budget. Thank you, thank you Councillor Brown. Councillor White. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I appreciate I'm a standing on this committee, so it's possible this uh, question may have been asked before. I have in front of me the original consultant's report, which was part of the uh, LGR documentation. 
from that forecast recurring annual savings of between 45 million and 66 million across Dorset. Now against that, I see in front of me proposed savings of possibly around 10 million for BCP. And I have to say that seems to me to look extremely modest in relation to what we forecast originally for LGR. So I'd appreciate a comment on that. Councillor Brown. Um, I'm assuming so that reports about the savings from local government reorganisation. Um, my understanding is we've already, uh, as BCP, have um, driven out £19.5 million worth of savings approximately from local government reorganisation. Some of that will be within the current financial year of 1920. This is obviously looking at the future financial years, 2020, 2021, 2022, etc. Um, but already... The you know, best part of £20 million has been driven out from local government reorganisation, and there's further savings on that you know, with, within here as well. Um, and as that progresses, you know, looking at transformation, then there's maybe similar numbers driven out through the sort of next transformation phase. So, so I don't think it's not, in, it's not at all inconsistent with the, with the figures that were put in the reports there. So. Thank you. Councillor Bartlett. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor White has stolen my thunder there. He's asked exactly the same question that I was going to ask, so thank you. Councillor Brown, you can answer again if you like. <laughs> <laughs> um, Councillor Nicola Green. <laughs> thank you, Chairman. Um, and um, members, thank you. Um, I, I think I have to claim some responsibility for asking for these figures. So, and I thank um, the members um, of the Cabinet officers um, and members of this panel for their patience in looking through this. Um, the reason that I asked the question in the first place was that one of the most important roles of this body is to um, look into risk, um, and therefore my thinking was that we need to understand how deliverable, how robust we think the savings are, as indeed other investment um, uh, priorities are. So I think it's very helpful to have that detail. But I have to say, given when I asked the question and where we are now, which really doesn't seem that long ago, that has been um, quite a big shift. I, I understand the, um, uh, the reasons, that, and we've had the local government settlement in the meantime, so I do understand the reasons for it. But I am extremely glad that we've, uh, we've gone through this process and that we, have, we are looking at these figures today. Um, and I have one further question on the corporate services um, angle. But the, uh, the question is, and it follows on from Councillor Haynes, really, um, there is an iterative process of setting a budget. We all understand that, and I do accept your um, uh, your points about there is a range within those savings. But pretty soon, councillors are going to be asked to support the budget, um, which the administration will be um, uh, will be presenting, and therefore, at what point, and how close are we today to that point where we can genuinely understand that these are robust deliverable and reliable figures for us to set that decision within. Shall I ask the other question now, because it's quite separate? We'll go with that one first, Councillor Brown. Um, yeah, it is, you're right, it is an iterative process. You know, these numbers sort of always um, develop as the weeks go on. Um, yeah, we were, obviously because of the timescales and the dates of the budget meeting, we are within a couple of weeks of these figures being baked in within the budget. Um, so, yeah, there will be some, I'm sure there will be some um, tweaks and some additions between now and February. Um, but, yeah. Councillor Green. Thank you. So I, I think, and I'm not putting words into your mouth, I'm just trying to ensure that I've got the right understanding, that we're saying that we're doing the proper job of looking at these figures today and we can therefore um, look at them in some detail. Um, and the, the second question, which therefore follows from that, um, is around the um, – throughout the schedule, there are figures um, for um, – which are around staff savings. Obviously, I note what the chief executive said, but my question is quite different from that. And that is, how do those collectively measure up um, with other papers that this board and um, cabinet have taken through around the organisational redesign – um, and um, uh, other such papers about how, how we're going to be moving forward. Is there a read across, essentially? If we look at those, those lines, um, 35, 21, 6, sorry, these aren't in order, but there are a number of those lines uh, within there. So just when you were, if one were to lump them together, the figures, not the people, um, 
would that therefore, is there a direct read across to other papers and other assumptions that we are, um, uh, we've had presented to us? And what I'm not asking for, uh, you for it right now, but is there something perhaps that you can forward to panel members to give us some reassurance that these figures are what we were expecting through other papers? Thank you. Yeah, Shall I have a go at that one in the sense that, you know, I think what's in front of you would be wholly consistent with the question that Councillor White and Councillor Bartlett asked with regards to the savings flowing from LGR. You then went on to talk about the transformation um, and the reorganisation, you know, that next phase which feeds out of the organisational redesign piece, those savings, you know, will then flow through into future years' reiterations of the medium term financial plan. So the 2020 21 savings are very much based on that LGR process. The 21 22, 22 23 onwards, as we move into that, that's where you'll get the read across, you know, to the, the transformation piece as we develop it and as the report is produced for Cabinet, I believe, in April of this year. Councillor Green. Thank you for that. Just to clarify, are we therefore saying that some of those um, 2021 savings are part year ones which have, um, uh, are still being fed through the system and therefore we will expect in future um, uh, papers on um, the MTFP for those 21, 22 uh, figures to be filled in? I'm not quite sure I understand your, your point in the sense that you know, where you have staff savings in um, tw headed 2021, that is the, the saving from taking, let's say, an individual member of staff out of the establishment for 2021, and that saving is then into the base and will recur every <coughs> year thereafter as part of that process. Um, we've yet to go through the reorganisation or design piece and what actual savings will flow from that on an individual line by line and individual person by person basis. Once those resolved, they're feed into future years MTFPs and budget proposals as they come forward. There are, I think, at least one saving in 2021 that relates to the transformational piece, and I think that's within the Adult Social Care Directorate. And I'm sure when you come to look at that directorate with the relevant um, portfolio holder, they can explain where they are with that. Thank you very much. In which case, if there are no... Oh, Councillor Brown. I'm just going to add one comment to add to... Um, member's point about obviously part of the scrutiny here was to look at the risk um, around these assumed savings um, and how certain are we of them and the, the member's question earlier about the amber rated ones and obviously amber is defined within there as um, in progress so actions to deliver the required saving are actively started but have not been concluded and that's true of some of those but also some of those if you look through the report a number of those amber ones are around fees and charges and income opportunities so that's where um, that's what we're forecasting the, the, obviously with income it is very much um, looking into the future so there's less certainty around them um, slightly higher risk but that's what there was you know the fees and charges and income levels are in ambered Thank you very much for that clarity, and I think that's a, that's a good point that members may wish to look at as we go through Councillor Brown's point that uh, AMBER is quite a, a wide range, and it may well be worth on the specific lines in the service directorates asking um, a little bit more about where, where that AMBER is, I suppose. Um, and just go back to Councillor Green's point as well, which I think was, was very well made, in that we, are, we do have a job of scrutiny to look at the risk. Um, it looks like this is the, 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 the main time we're going to be able to look at these items before the budget is is essentially unveiled and we have an obligation of scrutiny to make sure that we have looked at the risk in enough detail um, because if, if for instance the, the budget was put through and turned out not to be deliverable then we would carry some of the weight of responsibility as well if we haven't established that it was a deliverable budget so that's the real reason behind why we are here today so thank you very much for to Councillor Brown uh, in which case I will move on to the resources or corporate services, however, where um, section and Councillor Slade. Thank you, Councillor Slade. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, so, do you want me just to take this line by line and talk through it? Is that the best way to do it for everybody? Is that 
Yeah. It's entirely up to you. Okay. Yeah. If I take it that way, then if there's any questions on, we can take them line by line. So obviously the, the first one, um, obviously, as you've already heard, blue are already complete, so they're in the bag, um, done. Um, the first one relates to the bringing together of the um, Stour Valley and Pool Partnership and the Bournemouth, Revs and Benz team, um, and that's purely around staff savings between the two sets. So for those that don't know, Bournemouth was run completely separately, and although they still are separate teams, they're now under the same management structure, um, pending a decision longer term around whether we have a Pan Dorset service or a ECP service. Um, and so those savings are all already confirmed. Um, the only amber rating that we've got in this um, directorate is around uh, organisational savings. Um, and these, um, these are um, mainly duplication of systems. So uh, we've got a number of items in here around um, reduced numbers of phone lines, procuring of IT contracts um, and not replacing end of life systems. So um, some of these are amber because they're coming to the end of their contract at the end of the year and therefore they can't be confirmed as done until we hit the end of the year. Um, but I'm assured that the 279 has been, is there and it's, it's in there. Um, the, the contracts are all due to, to end um, or have been sort of bought out to the point where they, they can be confirmed. Um, the next line down it relates to the staffing savings um, around the teams and these are fairly standard ones. Um, there are things there around a post in trade unions. Um, obviously there were separate trade union posts for the different councils. There's no need for that anymore. Um, and that was through uh, natural wastage. Somebody was retiring and not replaced. Uh, a mini restructure in HR. A couple of posts in democratic services including the deletion of a post of leaders PA because obviously there were two leaders PAs. Um, and the other um, area in that which has um, which has had an impact is the way that we deal with emergency planning um, cover. So uh, on call costs and things like that, which have changed under new contracts. Um, and so that's um, created a saving as well. The fees and charges relate to the harmonization of the registrar's um, services across the three areas. It's again, quite a straightforward change in contract across the three pieces. Um, and, and the final one is um, your C goes in and comes out again. And that's around the new pathology unit. Um, we've, we've agreed a loan to the NHS for a new pathology unit. Um, and as part of that loan, there is an arrangement fee which we're receiving in this year, but it will come back out to next year. So that's uh, an in-out one, um, which is yeah, again straight, fairly straightforward. So the only one that's amber is, is those costs which are not to be completed until the end of the year. Thank you very much, Councillor Slade. Seems pretty straightforward. Any questions in this area? It's probably one of those that's all as as red, isn't it? In which case, that's fine. Well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, in which case, we'll move on in in order to the Children's Directorate, and I'll bring in Councillor Sandra Moore. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Hey, Councillor Moore. Is it? Oh, I'm That's working. I'm on. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Secretary Chairman, do you want me to carry on? Yeah. Right, well, there's a considerable difference, as you pointed out, from the 1.6 million figure that was shown in the papers at the previous ONS board meeting. Uh, the old figure reflected pressures inherited from predecessor councils, but there's been a change in the pressure profile as we become closer to the actual detail. So regarding the first figure of 850,000 shown as staffing savings following LGR, clearly we inherited this on the 1st of April from the Shadow Authority, and we're all well aware that creating one council from three would enable savings to be made. Now some of this is actually still uh, work in progress. It can be broken down. I have got the details, but you'll appreciate I've got to be really careful because we're not in confidential. Okay? So I've got 250,000 of savings from uh, removing middle managers, and this reflects obviously the economy of scale delivered through LGR. Um, there's 90,000 children's social care restructure, 
uh, to create one unit from the two, and again, that was expected through LGR. I've got 100,000 um, in savings from residual posts inherited from Dorset County Council and uh, savings from a budget allocated for possible staffing, which wasn't actually needed, so it was obviously removed. None of this involves frontline posts. Um, there's uh, 95,000, which is uh, savings from post changes due to service redesign, but this is actually work in progress, so therefore sensitive. Um, and then there's another uh, 215,000, uh, hopefully to be uh, savings from um, the early help. We've inherited uh, three different models of early help, so everyone is currently busy creating, when I say we, I mean Judith is, is uh, currently creating one newly help service out of the three. And again, this is still very much work in progress. There's a working group from Children's ONS looking into it, and a report is due to come to Cabinet in February regarding the new early help model. Um, and there's 100,000 savings from, again, from service uh, restructure, um, but again, everything is coming from back office. Okay, there's that bit. And then the, sig the second figure of 110,000 headed base budget review, and this can be broken down as 40,000 from Section 17 budget, and that's a discretionary budget which social workers can access to support children so that they don't come into care. And another 70,000 um, from underspends, and this comes again from, from looking at patterns of spending and uh, removing any obvious underspends. Thank you very much, questions. Councillor Moore. Colleagues, any questions in this area? Uh, Councillor Haynes. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for turning on the microphone for me as well. Um, just a, a follow-on question from um, earlier, um, Councillor Moore. In the previous budget paper, you actually alluded to it at the start of your presentation, the savings and efficiencies identified were showing at 1.9, but obviously it's only showing 960 here. And Councillor Brown had indicated that they'd actually been moved to other saving, saving li savings lines within this report. So could you indicate where they'd gone, the balance? Yeah, the, the, the figure that was quoted last time was actually the 1.6. That's what I was asked to uh, to read off. Um, but I can give you 100,000 was um, off the top of my head. Um, was actually um, in, it was for purposes of transparency, there was a, um, a figure put in for the PFI uh, for the library um, because in in the past it had been in the in this budget. Um, so it was a straight in and a straight out. And I think that that's the sort of thing it was. It was reprofiled, but there's another two hundred thousand. Mm, what was it? Yeah, it was growth. It was growth, and it's been put in, and it's 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 coming out as a savings. I think Judith can better just, explain I'm, that. Bit. Sorry to push it, it, it but we're figures, talking about yes, a million. At the, the, the December meeting, we we, we were told that the, the, the report that we had, because I don't know if it's gone in front of me, said that there were 1.9 million of savings that had been uh, identified within the Children's Directorate. We've now got, we asked for detail, and we've got the detail, and it says 900,000. Now, if there's an explanation, it would be, I think it's prudent for us to know where that, exactly where that million pounds has disappeared to. No, I've already said that the old figure reflected pressures inherited from predecessor councils. Uh, there's been a change to the pressure profiles as we've become closer to the actual detail. So to, so to paraphrase, in the last four weeks, the pressures have grown and wiped out that, that assume, the, a million pounds of those assumed savings. Is that Sorry? what we're saying? No. Okay. No, the absolute opposite. Okay. They were pressures. I they didn't materialise. I think. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Richens. Chair, if I can, can help. Yeah. I think as members have clearly articulated um, earlier as part of the discussion, the budget is an evolving process. It's a reiterative process. Um, as we went through the, the first phase leading into the December report, what we recognised is actually there were some items included within the savings 
that actually, when you really got down to the nitty-gritty of them, were, were actually savings against a, f- a previous growth pre- pressure. So all you were doing was reducing the number you previously thought of. So what we've done um, as part of you know, this process and giving you the most up-to-date list schedule of savings is we've challenged ourselves and said, well, actually, in some instances, we've got positions whereby we're going to reduce that previous growth pressure. So to answer your question, when the final MTFP comes out, you can wholly expect the pressure on children's services to be less than the, as articulated in the December report because actually what we've done is reduce that growth pressure. Okay, that is clearer. Councillor yeah. Haynes. So therefore, if I understood you correctly, Mr Richards, the pressure line in the MTFP, we would expect to see a reduction in that figure there. Yes, okay. Yeah. Just, just, just to make sure I understood it. Thank you. Right. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, no, I think we've, 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 we've clarified. Yeah. Councillor Bartlett. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'm not quite sure if this is the right time to raise this, but it's children. So um, there, was, uh, there was concern about the high needs budget for children, uh, which we've been told could result in a in a shortfall of about £9.8 million. Pounds. This was declared at the, the la- last time we reviewed the MTPF. Um, now, I understand that that's potentially a liability. It wouldn't necessarily be reflected I- I- in here. It, it's a separate budget. Yes. My understanding is the council has a responsibility to manage the funds and distribute it uh, from government funds. But I also understand that in, in the past... Um, We've, where we had a shortfall, the, the council and the education organisation basically split the shortfall in cost by about £2.4 million pounds, uh, each. So about roughly £5 million pounds was found. And from, from the Bournemouth Council at the time, its contribution was £2.4 million, which was taken from reserves, as I understand it. Now, uh, you know, I think uh, Councillor Brown did say uh, he was very concerned that the, this potential problem had not been properly addressed. And, and I'm wondering, you know, whilst I understand it's a liability on the balance sheet as opposed to one that would be in the budget, you know, where, where does that sit? Because it's a lot of money. And, you know, when you look here at uh, you know, sort of overall savings of sort of £8.2 million, pounds, you know, we're <laughs> being told that we've actually got a potential liability between these various organisations of £9.8 million for which there is no... Um, plan at the moment. I, I just want to know, you know, is, is this, you know, this comes within children's area. So is, is that, you know, is it now the time to ask, you know, what's happening with that? And, you know, what concerns do we have about it? Uh, is there a solution in being sought? And uh, where are we with it? Thank you very much. We did explore this in some detail at the last meeting, but by all means, Councillor Moore, if you've got any further updates to... I can add to that, yeah. It's, uh, it's actually this Friday. It's, it's going to the uh, school forum um, for a strategy and a plan as, as, uh, of action, basically, on it. Um, and in addition, they're also working with DFE um, um, about the whole thing. But this, I, I explained at the last meeting, didn't I, this, this is a government... Uh, uh, funding situation as well so obviously that's that's going through with the DFA but it's going to school forum and it's on school forum papers and there's a peer challenge as well around it yeah thank you councillor Nicola Green sorry thank you chair but I hadn't indicated apologies any other questions in this area in which case, thank you for um, bearing with us over that um, uh, kind of blip as well. It's, it's di- it is more difficult when we're not seeing the pressures at the same time. So, Okay, yeah, we'll take your word for it. <laughs> thank you very much. In which case, we will move on to the next directorate now, which is Adult Social Care, and we'll men- welcome Councillor Debenham. Thank you. Councillor Denman, yes. Just press it gently. 
Okay. There you go. I thought I had. <laughs> Chairman, I was going to say that um, I've got here 8 to 23. Now, I'm quite happy and prepared and able to go through that line by line. Or would you like me to whiz through the amber ones first, if that was a concern? Or yeah, I, I, I think that's a, a welcome suggestion. If you'd like to yes, um, pick I out the amber ones, and what yeah, we can do, okay. if members have any particular questions about those or any others, we can explore them at that time. It saves going through every single one. Thank you. Right, so I've got my first amber. Um, although I would like to plug the fact that I've got the blue. Thank you. Uh, the blue is eight. Number nine, which I've got down here, the transformation, and that's still amber, organisational re uh, design, or redesign, actually. Um, and this is one that is progressing actively. Now, this is actually going to our own scrutiny committee. So what I suggest to um, this board is that you come to our own scrutiny committee. I mean, no, quite seriously, because that's when we are going to be prepared to um, put it all before you. So that amber one is number nine. The next one down, which is amber, and then I can go through the white if you want me to, is 15. That's service effic efficiencies general. Now, I find that quite a... It's a big topic. I've got a lot of those. Um, this is actively progressing and it's enhancing support to self-funding care users to make decisions about their care. Now there is quite a bit to explain about that in that we have um, in place independent living advisors and they give information on care packages, um, not so much advice but information so that people don't automatically go with um, a particular um, um, provider because they think, oh, it's the only one I can get into. So um, they don't go through an unnecessarily expensive route. I mean, they might want to, but uh, our advice is that they should get value for money. And this has the effect of enabling them to be self-funding for longer. It's difficult to explain it, but obviously if you have a finite amount of money in your self-funding package and it lasts longer, then clearly that is beneficial to anybody who then has to pick up the funding at a later date. So I have it down in my notes. They do not get into our system too early. Now, that one is actively progressing, but this is quite, as you can imagine, it's an ongoing job. So we're not going to save everything tomorrow, uh, which is why it's still amber. Um, so I don't know if I need to say much more about that one. That was number, what did I say, 15... What's my next amber is number, hang on, number 18, ah. Now, this is another, um, oh, that's, oh, is it? Sorry. Oh, excellent. That's green. Good. The next amber then would be still 22, I think. And that one, um, it says about catering. <laughs> Something close to my heart, that one. That is simply means that we are harmonising, as we should have done, you know, should be doing by now. We're joining up the teams and we're running the service from a more central point. So this means that obviously there'll be a reduction in costs there. Now, um, as the Chief Executive said, we're not going to be talking too much about staffing losses, staffing um, reorganisations. That might be where the savings come from. So, um, again, that is an amber one. So that was number, what would, what would I get to? Uh, 22. All right, I go right down to 23, don't I? Which, again, is amber. That's the fees and charges. And that's gone to our own scrutiny committee, the chairman I see over there. It, that went on the 18th of October. And has, it has been agreed that we do the public consultation. And then that's returning. So that one is... I think somebody said about there are degrees of amber. That's quite an amber, amber. So, um, so that is all the ambers. Do you want me to stop there and get questions on the ambers, or shall I go back now? Yes, to the no, thank you very much. Okay. Um, colleagues, any questions on the items in this area so far? Councillor Mike Green. Thanks, Chairman. Um, can I just press you a little bit more on that line 22? Oh, hang on. Um, 
as yes. the um, the catering, the harmonisation of the catering yes. service, because it, it sounds to me what you're saying is that it's been written rather differently from all the rest of them, which are to do with um, rationalisation of service, etc. It, it just it, that sounds more in common with an area where either the fees for one part of the conurbation are moving up or where the service provided to one part of the accommodation are moving down, uh, the, uh, the accommodation are moving down. Because everywhere else, that sort of line, the explanation that you've just given, has been written in a different way. Oh, OK. Well, so uh, you're looking at harmonised catering services, <coughs> which was, as I said, that it's harmonised... Well, I won't read it again. Obviously, you've heard it. It's joining up the teams... So that isn't, I, as far as I understand it, and I'm sure the director will correct me if I get this wrong, I don't think we're going to be charging more for what we cater, but I think what we're doing is to, it will cost us less. Is that not the idea? Well, the, the, the idea is that we, we bring things, so it's a, yeah. it's a harmonisation yeah. issue. It will take us some time because of the particular nature of the yeah. service. Um, it is about, it w we will be needing to look at how many are our own staffing. I suppose the good news from um, a service user point of view is that our, often our costs for things like if you, uh, for charging for, mm. for uh, meals are based on the costs of Much the service. Less. So yeah. actually it's a benefit to us. It's, a, it's also, if we lessen the costs, it's a benefit to anyone who, who pays for the service. Councillor Green. Sorry, could I, could I just ask then um, that when putting these papers mm. together, it might be useful to to just make sure there's some consistency across directorates. For example, on um, Councillor Brown's, on the Saving mm. Resources Directorate, lines two and three, um, this is further service-based cost efficiencies from combining the Bournemouth, Christchurch and Dorset County Council and Pool teams um, so that's the systems now, uh, system uh, rationalisation. Sorry, that was Councillor Slade that brought it up. And then it talks about staffing savings. So it, if we're talking about staffing savings here, which it sounds as though we are, either staffing or accommodations yeah. or, or system change savings, yeah, suppose, yeah. then it would be useful to have it consistent across directorates because it's um, this makes it, it, it sound in the way that it's written as though it's to do with a service change or a fees change. Is that yeah, I, I, I think I think what, what why it's expressed in that way is we have two quite different ways mm. of delivering it, and therefore while the the, the savings may come from staffing, it was expressed in that way. But mm. we we can certainly yes. look to get consistency, and there's no problem in getting consistency in the future. Thank you, Councillor Haynes. Thank you, Jess. Just a very quick question on line number nine. Um, Councillor Debman, you mentioned that this is progressing actively and it's actually going to go to the next uh, Health and Social Care Committee. Can you advise when the paper will be available so we can actually have a look at it? Yes. Oh, sorry. I don't know which one I've said. It. Yes, it's available now. The chairman of that committee is over there. So okay. But yes, so yes, and it's open. Do come along and, you know, then sort of cuts up the, cuts up the other step, doesn't it? Thank you. Just not wanting to obviously uh, preempt that meeting there, but we, we talked about the Fifty Shades of Amber, so to speak. And um, on, on that one, I mean, when you look at the total cost savings for the Health and Adult Social Care Directorate, we've got just over three million. Um, probably around half, if not a little bit more, has come in. Um, uh, not free, but you know, you've got the rebasing of the uh, Dorset legacy demands, which is a, a million pounds. So that's kind of in the bag without having to do anything, if you like. And the same with the additional funding for the BCF. So the the, the, the real chunky part of that that saving is in that area of transformation. So again, I'm sure the Health and Adult Social Care Committee will probably look at the service side of it. But from a risk side, where do you see it on the scale of of being able to achieve? It? Because it, the problem with round figures is that you never meet the round figure. Um, so where where is the amber? Director, what she so, thinks in so terms of um, risk. So I would encourage you to come because actually yes. the, the the business case that's that's coming has mm. been worked up with KPMG, mm. who did um, considerable work on what kind of um, savings could be um, mm. uh, achieved. So this is a a more or less midway point before the, between the range that they uh, work with us on. So I think prudent from the point of it's not the lowest, it's not the highest. Mm. Um, this is about using transformation which has been done and tried and tested in other 
authorities, so we have learnt from the best with KPMG. It is about enacting the new operating model, so it is about responding very early, it's about engaging people with their local communities and finding uh, alternatives to, to care. So um, I think what I would, would say is we've taken a mid-range of a very detailed piece of, of work with KPMG, which, um, which we, we've, we've really valued. Um, and I think um, what I would say about the subsequent years is we will know in the first year whether what range the sub subsequent years because we'll have better testing and challenging. But it doesn't seem an imprudent thing to go with a mid-range of a, of, a, of a consultancy's piece of work um, in terms of what we might achieve. Okay. Councillor Nicola Green. Thank you, Chairman. Um, and with the Chair of Adult Health and Social Care sitting across from me, I think the question... Or what I'm seeking is some assurance from her. Um, we have these figures before us today, and I think we can perhaps shorten our d discussion somehow because uh, the service-based, as you've said, impact will be considered elsewhere. Um, but what I'm asking for is um, there is quite a lot of impact in here on people, on our residents. Um, and so what I would like to know that is that every one of these lines which impacts service whether they're blue green or white from our perspective today we may be content that those are really realizable savings but with our ward councillor and community representative hats on those of us who aren't members of that panel are seeking assurance that the impact on residents um, for example the um, uh, the Christchurch residents look like at first glance, the, uh, their domiciliary care um, will be affected to the tune of £80,000 and therefore to know what the human impact is and that that will be dealt with through the, um, the adult social care panel. And indeed, something that you commented on, um, Councillor Debman, when you came before us last time, was about the night service. Um, and that's something clearly that many of us won't know about, um, but you expressed some concern about that and, and the impact. So I'd just like members across the council to have the assurance that those things will be looked at, and likewise the, ch the impact of children's in the um, children's services over in scrutiny. Thank you. Councillor Debman. Yes. Yes, I'm really glad Councillor Green asked that because um, I am the worst person for making sure that, not the worst person, I think I'm the, probably the best person, but worst in some ways in making sure that no service user has a reduced service. And I think that I've argued that point several times in several ways. You mentioned the night care. I was initially, when we were talking about the services, I thought, oh dear, this is one that may be difficult. I am now totally sure that whatever happens, there will be no service user that does not get the care that the service user needs or indeed wants. There's a huge amount of that um, work going on, and I think the councillor is very right to comment on that, because all of this, and I think, I mean, I, I had on this list every service, even the catering, or especially the catering, <laughs> is... Um, impinges on a person at the other end and that person lives in Councillor Green's ward or Councillor Brooks ward and I think I can say confidently from my point of view and if I couldn't I would not want to sit here that the risks involved are so minimal as to be well they won't be allowed to impinge on services put it that way so and the other director wants to Chairman, add could to I that. just pick up the the reference to um, saving 12. Um, because uh, and just explain that because I think that was the the concern about domiciliary care in, yeah. in Christchurch. This is a saving that started in this financial year and is spread over three years. Um, the the frame the contract framework for domiciliary care, f which was inherited from Dorset County Council, was at a higher rate than the BCP framework. So what is happening is we are actually negotiating with providers, mainly for new to packages of care, that they are now picked up at the BCP rate. So the impact is around the rate that's paid per provider. It's not about um, anything to do with the, mm. the packages of care for yeah. individuals. So I just thought worth yes. clarifying what that one mm. means. Okay. Councillor Northover? Hold your finger on it for a moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just quickly looking to see what's actually is included on the agenda for our meeting next week. Um, we do have the... Um, the item that we were just talking about, which is number 
nine. But I don't know if Councillor Green was asking, are we looking at the whole of that section? If that's what you're asking, I don't think you do. Am I right? Can I just check? Which um, one that hasn't been included one? on the um, agenda as yet because we were we were doing scrutiny um, mm. between. If if Chairman wished to have it on the yeah. agenda for the the impact, would that can be discussed? But we we to date had not. I don't know that Children's mm. had either. But um, you know, if that's if that's what members would wish, then we can arrange for that to happen. Mm -hmm. No problem. I'm happy to take that forward. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, any further comments from or questions from members in this area? No, nope. in which case, thank you very much, Councillor Deadman, for your responses there. And we'll move on to the next area, which is the areas of regeneration and economy. I don't think we've got a direct cabinet member for this area, so whomever is, is wishing to come up for this area, then I'm quite happy to take multiple cabinet members. So al although it has uh, regen, regeneration and economy in the name, and actually none of these items are directly mine, so I will be <laughs> forward. It's very <laughs> so, brave to leave so from the front then. I've just come up then, here for a bit of entertainment, really. <laughs> I'm sure we'll, f we'll find something in there. But, so, uh, well, in, in which case, by all means, um, uh, I think the, the methodology we've hit upon of focusing on the ambers to start with is probably quite a, a good one. So whether we want to, to take it in the order and whomever uh, wishes to own that particular amber, um, by all means, um, um, uh, flavour us. That would be great. Thank you. No problem. So I'm happy to go first. So number 24 is mine. Um, it is an amber, and it covers um, 203,000. Um, 100,000 pounds of that is um, extra trading on the seafront and the cliff lifts, deck chairs, etc., um, we've got 25,000 of that is improvements for the arcade trading, um, and then another 60,000 for catering, um, including ex uh, an extra site and pool, um, and then there's 18,000 for rent reviews. Okay. Shall, shall, we, shall we move through them, and then we can probably take questions at the end? That might be the best yeah. way. Yep. Yeah. So 26. We'll just, we'll just focus on the amber ones at the moment. So if we go to 26. So 26 is a real mix. It's four items. Um, and, and so if I uh, tell you what them, I won't be able to answer any further details. So the first of those is, is about uh, um, the joint working for um, the seafront tourism. And it's effectively the, the, the tail end of, of the merger of those teams, which happened prior to the merger of the council. Um, it's £5,000 re-increase in, in the parking management fees from Sainsbury's in Poole. Um, there's a £5,000 um, um, from uh, some of the fees around the Two Rivers Meet Leisure Centre. Um, and there's £41,000 re regarding learning and skills, the ability to self-fund the, uh, and their pay and awards um, from, the, uh, um, from the fees that they raise. I'm going to go into number 28 next, which is the Adventure Golf, which is also amber. So this is uh, £130,000 income for the, the newly opened Adventure Golf on the seafront. Um, the figure in 2019-2020 uh, was only a part year because it was just opened in July. And in 2020 and 2021, it will be a, a full year's worth of income. Um, I've also got 31, which is also amber. So we've got staff savings here. Um, this is a mix of between um, destination and... Um, infrastructure staff savings however of the 94,000 you've got in front of you 50,000 of that were um, through the library service that were unfilled posts so there weren't any um, redundancies made there um, 32 I've got organizational savings um, so a mix of um, new and historical savings from shared services um, again about 50,000 pounds of that is in um, infrastructure as opposed to destination which I'm responsible for um, I think the only um, item that we've got there is uh, £23,000 for a reduction in the library's book budget. Um, and then I've also got 34. Oh, that's it. What's going? 33 um, is fees and charges for car parking. Um, that's that's the current position in terms of, of um, fees and charges. We are we are not allowed to set targets for that, um, so we have to work on the basis of, of current position. So depending on how the rest of the year goes, um, at the moment we're ahead on, on that. 
So I think we missed out number 30. Councillor Allison. Number 30 is Lewis. Yeah. Um, so this one is a result of the uplift in beach at prices. So we had a, a five year schedule for pools with a 5% average. Um, so there's roughly 187,000 of that is extra income. Um, minus, I think we've got, yeah. Um, and then obviously there's, there's the additional year, the year afterwards, you'll see that the um, 80, is it 85? Yeah, 85,000. That's due to the fact that the campus uh, Camper Cliffs project will be beginning, and obviously there's a big impact on the on the income of rents and beach huts during that period. Excellent. And finally, 36. Thank you. 36. Um, 36. Yeah. You got 36, or have I got 36? Yeah. I've got it. I'm 36. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is uplifting building control charges in line with inflation, as you can see, rebasing development management and corporate property income in line with activity and transport fees and charges. Um, only some of this item is derived through planning related activity. Um, much work was already done, uh, ready for day one of LGR to help harmonize the building control service provision across BCP as a whole. Um, so the 60K that you've got there is made up of 5,000 building control fee increase 7,000 development management income, 8,000 corporate property income, uplifts, uplifts from lease income, 40,000 transport fees and charges such as temporary traffic regulation orders and notices, permits, section 50 fees, section 171. And these all relate to sensible increases in prices, harmonizing, providing consistency across BCP where possible. Thank you very much and thank you to all the cabinet members for that run through. So um, colleagues we've got a, a, a number of relatively smaller amounts but often with some um, uh, consequences as, as all of them have so I'll move, I've had indications from Councillor Nicola Green No? Okay Councillor Lawton uh, Can somebody just explain to me 25 reduction in subsidies for buses uh, yes, yeah, certainly. That, that, that is green because it's already been taken. So, so this is um, about the school bus service, um, and there are 11 routes that we, we, we subsidise, and we've managed to negotiate that they will be run on a commercial basis apart from one remaining service. Um, so there's two that have been com three that have been combined uh, into two, um, and, and one is continuing to be subsidised. So, so this saving is, has already been achieved this year. So, so just a supplementary. So there's the sa the, any savings within the budgets or... Uh, subsidies which we which we apply to normal routes. Uh, no, it's specifically about the school the school bus routes. So, so there are the, the uh, um, it, it's uh, it's with go go south coast and it's it's the, the in the in the current academic year. Councillor Mike Green. Uh, I I was actually going to wait until the Green ones to speak about that, but I think actually that Councillor Hadley has um, answered that. I, I do have a. A, a couple of minor ones. Um, uh, maybe first, first of all, um, Councillor Phipps, on the building control charges, and I realise you said it's only 5,000 on that one that's expected. Um, historically, have we been able to keep up with the um, expected fee incomes from the building control charges that we as council have been charging around the three um, predecessor council areas? I'm sorry, I can't really tell you very much historically. The, 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 the reason I'm asking on that one is that um, I know in, in Bournemouth, certainly, that there has been considerable challenge in um, keeping up those, those incomes against MC Cook and other um, providers who have, are, are basically undercutting councils. So it, it, it's, I, I found it slightly surprising to see that we expect, even if it's only fractional, to be taking a greater um, amount out of building control when it seems that the challenges are there to sort of keep, keep up the share that we have got. I see where you're coming from on that. It is a small amount, and as far as I'm aware, it's really just a harmonising thing. We are just trying to look at sensible 
look at this very sensibly. Mostly we do need to be in the market there and in the right place. And it, it is about harmonising and providing consistency, really. And if you want something historical, then I would have to come back to you on that. Or I do have an officer here who could probably answer the question for you. I think, Chair, Chair my uh, question was only really, are we confident that we can keep up with the... Um, uh, the, the the budget, and if the answer, from, which sounds like from Councillor Phipps, is, then I'm satisfied with that. Um, my, my other question, and I said, I, you know, actually, can I quickly ask the one on the, on the, the bus subsidy? Um, you say it's combining three into two um, uh, routes that are, are, are provided to a, um, a particular, I don't know, this particular school or a particular pair of schools. Um, has that been consulted on with the um, with the users of the service? Yes, I believe so. The the, the same, the, although it's uh, um, three buses into two, they're still covering the same catchment yeah. area, so they're covering the the, the, the the and it is one for one school. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And, and the, the the other question um, again, I don't know whether somebody ha somebody else has it, but it's regarding the um, the the adventure golf. Was has somebody else already? I, yeah, I'm afraid I, I couldn't couldn't quite get what you were saying there, Councillor Allison, because you said that the it was because last year there was a part year, and this year there will be a full year. So surely we already had in the budget for 2021 a full year. So I can't see how the change would take place. In, in 2021, it was uh, sorry. In 2020. It was a half year, and so then this is the savings from in, in between this last year and this year coming forward. So I, I Does that make sense? think not not really to me, if I may, Chairman, because I think this these savings yeah. are what are due to be delivered against the previous assumption of 2021, not of 1920. So you you are now assuming extra. What has has made you put that? amount in there for this year because and the previous year only only had the numbers I'm, for, for I'm sorry I don't think that that's the way the budgets work it was it, it was already in the 1920 budget that there would be a part year it was in the 2021 budget that there would be a full year so it's not just the fact that it's gone from part to full which means that there is a budget change a savings amount. Mr. Richards. If I can just come in and offer a, a degree of clarification, because I think the council has answered it completely correctly in the sense that in the budget for 1920, the Shadow Authority approved, they assumed half a year income from the um, Adventure Golf. We round roll forward, and all you've got in there is the income for six months. So to take up to income for 12 months, they're taking the other amount of income into the equation. So it was part year impact in the first year, part year impact in the second year to get you to a full year impact going forward from there on as part of that process. So, so for me, Chairman, what we're saying is actually it's just saying this was already in the MTFP and it's, it's still in the MTFP. same question that I had so it, it, it does seem unusual not to put future years projections in and to do it on a per year basis but we'll, we'll take that as, as read any further questions Councillor Haynes thank, thank you chair um, on line 30 the beach hut income um, just wondering whether portfolio holder could say a bit more because it does say in that uh, box there under the des description that it's to do with tariff harmonisation and price adjustment in other areas. So I'm particularly interested in the tariff harmonisation bit, um, harmonising which area with which area. That's what I was saying. Hang on, yes, I've got a clarification on that. I'm not 100% sure I've got the right information in front of me on which parts it was that go together. Oh, I didn't hear the full question. Sorry, I didn't hear the full question. All right, um, it was just to do with uh, the phrase that said tariff harmonisation. So I'm just wanting to know, because I know, because obviously I used to be formerly Borough Pool and we had 
like a fee schedule over a period of time, but it says here tariff harmonization. So I just wanted to know a bit more whether it has gone, uh, the prices have then in general gone up or the prices have in general gone down and <coughs> which area has harmonized with, with, with which, how the harmonization had actually impacted uh, the income line. Okay, um, so you're right, the, the, the Paul Beach huts I think in the last year of the previously agreed four-year, four- or five-year strategy, they've gone up this year approximately about 5% um, on average. It's slightly difficult to, to say that completely because of the different um, years that they, they operate in. So Paul Beach huts are January to December and Bournemouth and Christchurch Beach huts are, are March to April, so they go straddle across financial years. This year, the proposal is that the Paul, um, sorry, that the Bournemouth and Christchurch beach huts also go up by approximately five percent, um, which brings that sort of harmonisation in terms of the price increases. We haven't yet looked at the the harmonisation of the product right the way across the board, and that's something that we're still scoping out. Any further questions from colleagues in this directorate? In which case, thank you very much on that area. We'll move on to the final one for consideration, which is environment and communities. And I think to start with on this, this is probably where the public question comes in. So I don't know whether, Mr Spracklin, you wish to uh, come up and read your question, and we can perhaps deal with that first. It might seem sensible. Oh, sorry, microphone. So we could just... I mistakenly thought that uh, this item, item 30, I think it is, or 40, 40, related to seascape, but it doesn't relate to seascape, so, but I'm still being given an answer as a, a fuller explanation to that particular item because it's not particularly clear. Is, if, are we, if, we're con if you're content with that, I then... Can yes. read, I can read an answer if the committee would find it helpful. Uh, if, it, it might be worth hearing the question and the answer anyway, because yeah. it might well be useful uh, overall, if you, if you like. Okay. I haven't got the question. Oh, well, I've got the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is related to an item that appeared in the accounts for Seascape. And my question was... Is this item in C the accounts for Seascape related to the, this, this particular item in, uh, in, in the list, number 40? Mrs Ryan. Okay. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, so the, it, it, I appreciate the question and the wording, I think, isn't that clear, so it's helpful to be able to clarify. Um, the in-house team savings item isn't related to the Seascape South Limited Company activity or any other company. The in-house maintenance team is a Bournemouth-employed, Bournemouth, Bournemouth neighbourhood-focused team. The increased income has been identified for two main reasons. Firstly, in looking at BCP Council, we now deliver maintenance services across the larger corporate estate and therefore have found some efficiencies of scale. Also, the budgets have been aligned for 2020 and slash 21, which reflects actual income achieved over previous years, which is beyond the stated budget expectations. So, in effect, it's an alignment of budgets to get them right for the future um, now that the service is looking at all of our assets across BCP. Thank you very much. And thank you for bringing that question, Mr Sprackling, and hopefully we've... Um, got some clarity on that so thank you in which case we will move to the directorate within this area we've got two main areas of amber accounting for about 1.1 million pound of savings in the forthcoming year which are around organizational savings and staff savings so they're probably the ones i would suggest to focus on so i'll pass it over to the cabinet members thank you um you're the ones first on the list isn't it yeah, I mean, it, we, we've got the, the first two here, 36 and 37, have obviously been distributed to the, all three of us because they variously break down into different portfolio holders. So the very first one is um, cost-saving efficiencies from the combining of um, the, the, the councils, um, and it includes um, 158,000 for Christchurch waste collection. Oh, I can I've speak got, about those ones. Okay. The reason I said you first was because the Communities Operations <coughs> Review was on the first line just there. 
which has got you next to it. Oh, <laughs> that was all. But that's actually for next year. Um, a bit of I go with Christchurch waste collection. Um, so let me just get my notes up. Um, so uh, this is mostly management fee saving. Um, so uh, the fact that we ha we pay um, a management fee with Dorset. Um, and when that uh, collection service transfers back in-house, then we won't be having to pay that management fee because we'll be doing it ourselves. Um, any questions on that? Councillor Anderson. Um, is this, the, this is the Dorset Waste Partnership fees we're talking about. Yes. And um, are the, I believe there were problems in the past with Dorset Waste Partnership and they were uh, charging a slightly higher fees than uh, we were. Is that uh, so what's going to happen with the... Uh, Harmonisation between the, the services between Christchurch and Bournemouth and Paul. What do you mean? Well, it, we, we have a different services. I mean, let's if we start with um, the size of the bins for uh, if we if we take an example of green waste, um, Bournemouth, Paul, and Christchurch all have different uh, bin sizes. I know that uh, the green waste, for instance, yeah. is uh, has different um, different times for Christchurch from Bournemouth. And I know that the, the waste collection in uh, the Dorset Waste Partnership is uh, segregated waste at uh, source where they have uh, the glass separate from uh, the paper and other recyclates. So there are, there's a, there are differences there. So what's happening about those differences yeah, that's and the saving. costs associated with them? That saving is just to do with the management. It's not actually to do with the operational aspect. Okay. Any other uh, questions on that? Carry on, and then we'll probably okay. we can probably come to the questions afterwards. Thank you. Um, so Christchurch Garden Waste. Uh, this is a saving re related to uh, the Christchurch Garden Waste coming in house, um, and it's mostly to do with the fact that several rounds uh, are predicted to be quite light, um, and the fact that we should be able to amal amalgamate some of these rounds, and so that creates the cost saving. Any questions on that? Uh, that one is 150k. Um, and then there's 300k, which is related to operational efficiencies in park services. Um, and so this is uh, the remo removal of duplications in management roles. Um, so this is not related to frontline activities. Great. Do you want to go on to the next one, the staff savings? Yeah, I can do. So number 37 is obviously, as you say, staff savings for um, following the merger. Uh, which one? Oh, sure. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so this is uh, 535,000 for staff for, uh, staff savings. Um, 125,000 from the community's directorate, um, 250,000 from the environment, and 160,000 from housing. Um, this is, you know, in line with the other ones in the paper, which are just to do with staff restructuring following the merger. Okay, thank you very much. In which case, I'll move to colleagues for any questions they may have in this area. Councillor Green. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I've just got a couple of questions on Greens. And in fact, Councillor Anderson started in... Um, uh, talking about the green waste harmonisation item, the um, number 55. Could you just explain, again, it may be something to do with it being misnomered. Um, as far as I can tell, this green waste is actually preserving a disparity between the costs this year. It's, um, if I'm right, it's the one that you previously spoke about which is the charge for the, st predominantly the charge for the second bin in Bournemouth, um, which actually would give, two 140 litre bins would give almost identical capacity to one 240 litre, which is elsewhere. So I, I'd just like to ask, where's the harmonisation involved in that, if that is indeed what the uh, 55,000, what the saving is from? Councillor Rice. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the, the saving, I'm getting confused now, <laughs> um, the, the 
service, uh, the fact that it's being harmonized um, it creates the saving rather than actually the service fees. Councillor Green. C could you explain a little bit more about that? Because actually I think it's absolutely the opposite. The, uh, the, the fact is that there is a different charge in Bournemouth from in Poole. Um, there was an opportunity to harmonise, um, but that opportunity has not been taken, and that has led to the increase in fees translating to the £55,000 extra in, um, in, in savings, or actually in, in, in increased fees to, uh, to our residents. Could Councillor you explain Rice. that, Councillor Rice? Yeah, well, I'll let Kate explain that for you. I'm a little bit confused with what's happening. <laughs> Um, so, so this um, savings proposal um, is a result of the decisions that were taken in the autumn by Cabinet, um, which was the proposed option to align the green waste service. So this saving assumes we get the same level of registrations and with the harmonised fee, which is across BCP, so there was changes made to every area's fee level. Um, this is our forecast of what the income will be from that aligned service and that will be fed back into the service. Councillor Green. So, so if I may, the um, Chairman, what we're talking about here is having an aligned fee without having an aligned or harmonised fee but not a harmonised service. So I think again I would challenge the way that it's being presented in this report. This is an increase in fees which, which preserves the disharmony between the services, between the areas of the conurbation. <coughs> Councillor, Councillor Rice, please. Oh, well, we're harmonising step by step. So this is the first step that we've harmonised. Councillor Haynes. Um, thank you, Chair. I think I'm even more confused now because I think um, Councillor Rice started off by saying savings was harmonising of waste, green waste collection with Christchurch. So Councillor Mike Green no, 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 hit me to it by saying, well, that's what separate. about the fees? I'm thinking, well, exactly. If you harmonise the service, then the fees should be harmonised. But it's either one or the other or none. But it looks as though nothing's actually being harmonised at the minute. So a lot of confusion, I think. Um, if I can just respond to that. The, the Christchurch Green Waste Service is being bought back in house, and so the savings from that that's different from the harmonisation of the pricing schedule. Chairman, if I'm a quick <coughs> um, I believe that the Christchurch Waste Collection Scheme has a different uh, period of collection from the Bournemouth scheme. So, how are you harmonising that collection with the Bournemouth scheme? Um, it's been calculated so that they are they pay a they pay a proportional amount depending on how many collections are done within the total year. So that was in the paper in back in uh, when it went through Cabinet before. If I may, may Chairman, I, I think we need to record. Um, this is, uh, as we saw back in the autumn, this is sleight of hand. Um, what the situation is, is that everyone, everyone has been given an increase in price or, or, or relative in, in increases in price. Um, but the, ha the service has not been harmonised. The, the, the <laughs> you, you may say that it's the, the, the same amount being charged or getting close to the same amount being charged per bin, but when one bin is effectively half the size of the other and we are assuming that people will, ha will have two bins in Bournemouth um, to give the same amount of collection of waste as one bin in Poole, um, that is not a harmonised service. That is a, a fee increase, and I think that I would ask the cabinet member to be um, to be honest about it. Um, the, sorry, my thing's gone. Uh, in the spreadsheet, you will see that it is to do with fee consistency. Um, so that is what we are applying. Uh, we are harmonising the price schedule, and that is what we are doing. So, D Chairman. <laughs> And this was all agreed I think, I think most people would agree that if you were to harmonise stuff, it means charging the same amount for the same amount to be collected. That's what harmonisation is. And all I'm asking for, unless I'm 
asking this in the wrong way and, and I'm not making myself clear. I'm just asking the Cabinet member to be honest and say that what is being done here is it is preserving a differential in pricing between Bournemouth and particularly Poole. That is what is going on, and with the overall increase in um, price, that produces an additional 55000 in fees that comes into BCP Council. Um, I'm aware of everybody's valuable time here, and we've covered this many, many times, and you've had plenty of opportunity to feedback before the decision was made. So this is a decision that has already been made, um, and uh, thank you, but we have covered it plenty of times. Perhaps you answer Councillor Green. Um, one final question. It, it's the question around um, bereavement uh, revenues, and very similar to the one um, that I asked Councillor Phipps, um, in that particularly around the crematoria, it has proved his historically difficult to maintain our revenues for bereavement. And so how robust do we believe that the, um, uh, the fees increase that has been um, uh, has been included in this budget is, and so th how robust is that savings? Um, yes, well, it's being carefully thought, back, thought about, as you would expect, um, and we are aware, um, and we have to be realistic about the private cremation services that are increasing locally, um, and so that has been borne in mind when uh, coming up with this number. Um, so potentially it will be a, um, more than 100k, um, but that is a, um, a, a reasonable prediction. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can, uh, Mrs. Ryan. Um, I just wanted to add um, for context um, that. There is a pressure that is also in the budget. I haven't got that in front of me in terms of from this service. So whilst we are able to um, predict an increase, so a, a savings proposal, as it were, by, an, by fee harmonisation, there is a larger pressure which is coming from the competition, um, which is being set into the budget for next year as well. So there is a significant issue around the overall income coming across bereavement services and there is a forecast, uh, there's something in the forward plan in terms of actually having to really take stock of the right model going forwards for our bereavement services. Thank you very much. If there are no further questions, uh, Councillor Haynes. Thank, thank you, Chair. It's just a point of clarification. Line 39... Could you explain to me what that line means? It's a contribution from General Fund from the Homeless Property Acquisition Program. And I'm looking at it, it says Homeless Property Acquisition. Just wondering how that can then, is that whether that's a saving or that's an income? It's, uh, Chair, can I, if you don't mind, I think we've got apologies from Councillor Wilson. So if you would take an answer from myself. Um, this, is, um, this is the... Um, the proposal that Bournemouth Council uh, have been implementing since the year 1617 to acquire property um, to use um, to support the housing of homeless people out of B&B um, in, a, in a sort of taking stock um, and, and a review. Uh, we've been through some increases in costs because of things like the change in prudential borrowing rate but also actually because some of the properties have been acquired ahead of the schedule, we're getting increased rental income. So it's actually positive when we actually took all of that through a review and enabled us to, in effect, put £150,000 into the general fund from, from that programme, which is running through the company. Thank you very much. Councillor Farquhar. Thank you, Vice Chair. It's not actually a question for the uh, portfolio holder or the uh, director. Um, I would like to thank um, the Chair for organising training on the uh, scrutiny of budgets. It was very useful for new members and uh, new councillors. Um, a terminology which uh, came out from that training was not getting lost in the woods or um, in the uh, American terminology, getting down in the weeds. Um, I do seem to recall some no small amount of time on a previous o uh, ONS 
where we talked about bin sizes and harmonization and the realities of you know taking one plastic bin away to replace it and so on and so forth and I think a decision was made and a recommendation was made to the council but I wholeheartedly support the portfolio holder in that that decision has been made and we move forward terminology which is not useful um, I think in an ordinary view of scrutiny is questions of honesty and sleight of hand etc when we're looking at budgets I certainly didn't seem to recall anything like that in our actual training so it's only an observation and I'd like to thank you very much for the training which we got and for us to stay focused on the fact that we don't get lost in the woods and we don't go in, into the weeds particularly at this sort of level thank you for your contribution do we have any further questions in this area in which case, thank you very much to all of the Cabinet members that have attended us for this um, second part of, of budget scrutiny. That then finishes item five, and, that, and therefore this, the first of two of our review and scrutiny board meetings. If members are agreeable, we'll have a half an hour break and, break and recommence for the second of the board meetings at 6 p.m. Thank you very much for your time. Yes,